Hi guys, it's Krista from Playing With A Purpose. This week our class is learning all about winter animals. So I thought I would show you some of the activities, books, and crafts that we did. I introduced the children to the winter animals theme by bringing this little squirrel figure puppet up and asking the children where they thought this little squirrel lived in the winter time. Afterwards, we read two stories. The first one is called Footprints in the Snow, and the second story is called Over and Under the Snow. The first story shows different animals and their footprints, and it shows pictures of where the animals live. I think the pictures in this book are fantastic. It really shows how the animals move in the winter. So you can see why they have such big spaces between the footprints. And on each page, when you're introduced to a different animal, you also see a new set of footprints. Someone stomps. Home. So you can see that the bear is in his den. So this story is excellent because it shows the children different footprints in the snow. And it also shows their homes. And this one is great because it talks about what's over the snow and what's under the snow so the children can understand that there's a whole hidden world that we don't even see under the ground and some animals live over the snow like the owl and this page shows a tiny little mouse under the snow and how a fox can listen and still hear the little mouse under the ground and he leaps for his dinner so both of these stories are excellent for teaching the children about hibernation. It touches on where the animal homes are and also footprints in the snow. For follow-up activity for this, I gave the children some white Play-Doh and a basket of animals from the story. So the children will be able to observe that the animals have different feet. So they will just press the animals into the white Play-Doh. We also played a really fun game after with different pictures of different types of animals and the children would guess if they were a hibernator or not a hibernator. If the children thought that the animal was a hibernator we would put over top and if they thought he was not a hibernator they would turn it on the blank side. So this was a fun way to talk about which animals hibernate and which animals do not. Another day we read the classic story of the mitten and for this story what I did was I brought a white mitten to circle. I gave each of the children a different animal from the story and when we got to that part in the story the children had an opportunity to place their animal inside the mitten. So just a simple way to keep the children engaged through the story. On the third day, we read Stranger in the Woods, and this is such a sweet story. It's a story about children who made a snowman in the bush, and the animals don't know who the stranger is in the bush. It's super sweet, it has amazing photographs in it, and it's also a great opportunity to talk about strangers. So we were able to build on the children's understanding of who a stranger is. So during the story, the animals are talking to each other and they're all asking who this stranger in the woods is. And they're the sweetest, sweetest pictures. The pictures are amazing. On every page, the animals are asking each other who the stranger in the woods is. and it builds so much suspense. So the children start to wonder who this stranger is. The chickadees are the bravest and they decide to go check out the stranger. And, and they discover that they have some wonderful treats waiting for them. All the animals begin to come out and check out the stranger. The animals enjoyed their visit to the stranger of the woods and had a great feast. At the end of the story you see the children peeking from behind the bushes and so they decide to go back so that they can feed the animals again. So this is a very versatile story. You can read it at any time during the winter and 
I just loved it for Animals in Winter Week. I also have the board book version, but my children actually really enjoyed the full length version. So if you're new, we live on a property with 39 acres. So after reading this story, I told the children that we were gonna make a stranger in the woods. And then we were gonna watch and wait and see if the animals came to eat our food. So we brought out some bird seed, a hat, some gloves, and some raisins. And we went out and we built a snowman. The snow wasn't exactly the best snowman making weather, so we were only able to make a small snowman, but the children really enjoyed it. I'll insert some pictures and videos of us building our stranger in the woods. And we can treat for the animals. You're making some treats for the animals? For the animals. We know they're there. We see footprints. Are these going to be yummy treats for the animals? Yeah. I think it's On the fourth day, we read The Gruffalo's Child. And before I read the story, we talked about different feelings. And then I read the book, When I'm Feeling Scared. I asked the children what kind of things make them feel scared. I asked them what kind of things make them feel happy or excited. And then we read The Gruffalo's Child. So this is a super, super cute story. It's about a Gruffalo dad and child. The Gruffalo dad tells his Gruffalo son to never ever step foot in, in the deep dark wood. And when he asks why, the dad explains that in the deep dark wood there is a big bad mouse and he's terribly strong. And so the Gruffalo child is super curious and so one night when the Gruffalo dad was sleeping and the Gruffalo child was bored, he goes out on the hunt for this big bad mouse. So he looks through the forest, he finds different animals and different tracks, finally stumbles across the mouse. He says, not big, not bad, but you'll make a good midnight snack. So the mouse says, Wait, 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 wait. Don't eat me. Wait, I have a friend that's big and bad. So the mouse hops up onto the tree branch and with the light of the moon, he has an enormous, big, bad mouse shadow. And so child is so scared that he runs back home to his Gruffalo dad. So it's a super cute story. So what I'd like to do after reading this story is give the children some flashlights and some different animals from the story. I like to choose different interesting shaped animals so that they show up really well on the wall. So I picked an owl and a snake. We just went into a dark room and we played with the flashlights and these animals. This one is, this one is. You like that? The last day we read Tracks in the Snow and we looked through this Animals in Winter book. When I give the children a book like this, we actually just talk about what we see in the pictures. It helps to build conversation. This is a National Geographic book and I find the children absolutely love to look at real photographs. You can point out the footprints in the snow. You can talk about what the different animals eat. So it's a great way to just build conversation. 
and find out what the children are interested in. After we read this story, we went for a walk in the bush and we looked for different tracks in the snow and then we tried to guess which animals made them. What kind of tracks do you think they are, Abby? I wonder if they come from Garnet. You think they came from Garnet? Yeah. I don't know. They look like animal tracks to me. The track. These boot marks are Garnet's boots. Make a footprint, Garnet. Let's see. Does it match? Oh, yes. Look, it looks the same. But what about these ones? What kind of tracks are these ones? Whoa, they're everywhere. Let's go in the bush. Okay, let's go. Let's go. I think it is a bunny. I think these are bunny tracks. I think this is where a bunny hops. What kind of tracks do you see? Oh, these ones are different. And then for a follow-up activity, I talked to the children about how there's animals have different things that help them during the winter. I talked to the children about the Arctic hare and how he turns from gray in the summertime to white in the wintertime. And this is so that he can hide in the snow. We made our own little Arctic hares. I wanted to make these a little bit textured, so I just used paint and some flour. And I let them just finger paint on a piece of brown paper. And then I just gave them some pieces to stick on. Some bunny ears, some eyes, and a little nose. So they turned out super cute. And the children could learn an interesting fact about the Arctic hare. A reminder that my comments are turned off because of the new rules with COPPA. So if you'd like to talk to me, you can find me on Instagram. And my Instagram is linked in the description. I'm Krista with Playing With Purpose. I'll see you next time. What happened? Where did the peanut butter go? To the bird's tummy. What about the seeds? In the bird's tummy. They were hungry. We better make some more. Should we make some more? Where Where did his red hat go? It's no way. Maybe one of the animals is wearing the hat. Yeah. Do you think so? Yeah. Say yeah. animals. Animals. Did you take the red hat? Whoa. What do you see? Peck marks. Peck marks? They're kind of dots. They're kind of dots? Yeah. Just like our story. Peck, peck, peck. Wow.